I can't share my screen on here. See, that's why I'm glad I did it. I think I can share my screen. Yep. Damn. Okay, let me start it on uh, Safari. Sheesh. Glad I did it just now. Start meeting. Verify and see you. Okay, somebody's trying to come in, but just one second. Yeah, 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 yeah. Damn, what's the, uh, what is the, um, where's the Google Meet link? Here it is. Boom. Exit out of here. Okay. Cool. Mr. Willis, what's up? 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 What's up, D boy? How you doing, brother? Good. How you doing? I'm good, man. Shoot, sure. just trying to get back in time to get back to work, boss. Where are you at right now? No, we're back in the U.S. You know, we just came back from uh, uh, Cancun, Tulum area this morning. Oh, okay. I'm sure that was beautiful. Man, man, shoot. Trying to keep up, trying to keep up with you, my brother. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Hey, man. Anytime you know you get some white, white beaches and been blue water, man. You, you hey, know, man. You it's not be doing no complaining, brother. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right. Well, that's what's up. Well, welcome back to U.S. soil. Absolutely. Appreciate you, boss. Okay. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. All right. Today, guys, we're not going to really wait um, for a lot of people to join in. We're going to give them only about a minute or two, um, and then we're going to get this thing started. Today's class is going to be a little bit shorter than the other classes that we have had that have been typically like about 60 minutes of just straight content. Today is going to be about 40 to 45 minutes, and then what I want to do is I'm going to give everybody an opportunity at the end to get on my calendar, get with me next week, and really go over these uh, examples of how they exit strategies in detail that's what i want to do because i just don't have enough time to go over all these multiple exit strategies within the hour so what i'm going to do is i'm going to briefly touch on them i'm going to mostly talk about two or three of them and then some of them i'll just kind of breeze through but what i want y'all to do is like i said i want y'all to get on my calendar and get with me so that's what I'll try to do. But we're gonna give everybody, like I said, one more minute to 802. And then we're gonna get this thing rolling. Let's see if generational it, it, it comes in this time with this camera on or not. <laughs> oh, I think he I think he's off. There we go. Yep, yeah, we're good. All right. All right, we're gonna give everybody about one more minute. One more minute. Hope everybody's excited. This week's class, give it your die trying. That's the theme, creative financing. Turn those clothes slash dead leaves into some money. Them dead leaves, I'm sorry, into some closed deals. So hey, before I get started here, I want to see, did anybody in here see the In The Hood 50 Cent parody video that we created? If so, can I get a yes, please, in the comments? I want to see if everybody's seen that or not. Nice white tee. I appreciate it. I stay with the white tee. Y'all know that's going to be my signature. Y'all know Steve Jobs known for the black tea. I'm known for the white tea. All right, cool. Yes, y'all saw it. Y'all saw it in the hood. All right, perfect. So like I said, what I'm going to do is it's 802 and stick to my word. I'm about to get this thing rolling, y'all. So if y'all, just another, some little housekeeping. If y'all have any questions, any questions at all, y'all, please drop them in the chat. And I promise you, I'm going to circle back to them. And I will answer them at the end of the, the conversation here. All right. But let's get this thing started. So. Reunited. Get rich or die trying creative financing. It is week five. We are in week five out of the 12 weeks that we have. So we're almost halfway there, ladies and gentlemen. Um, again, I am your host, Dylan Wade. Make sure if y'all aren't already, follow me on Instagram at purchase.house and join the Telegram if you haven't already, which you guys should have should be in the Telegram. That's the only way that you guys should be able to even have access. 
All right, so let's add these people in. Cool. All right, so again, give it to that try and create a finance in week five. Let's get this thing kicked off. Let's get this thing started. As always, we're going to start this off with an agenda. And our agenda for today's class is we're going to do a brief recap, just in case anybody missed, on what the previous weeks had, what the conversations were like, as well as how you can use broker lists as an exit strategy. I know briefly last week we spoke on broker lists as listing on the MLS. But I'm going to talk to you about another exit strategy that you guys can use a broker list for to kind of get some of those dead leads and turn them into closed ones. As well as we're going to talk in depth about on this conversation. Most of this conversation is going to be about these two things, making the seller be your bank. So uh, owner financing slash land contracts and subject to those are going to be the two things that we spend a lot of time today on um, and, we, and that we have a good conversation on today. Uh, next is going to be Novation. We're going to just breeze through that. Uh, Novation just has been a, a guru topic that they have been trying to kind of bring up a lot more. But like I said, I want us to focus more on subject two and land contracts, less owner finance, less seller financing. These are going to be the two things that you guys can be able to use creatively to get into some deals with little or no skin in the game. Um, then we'll talk about short sales. We'll talk about that for a good little moment. Um, and short sales and what the benefits of those can be. And then last, of course, we'll go into some questions, open the floor for you guys, and then I'll give my thanks as always. So if you guys are ready, can I please get a ready in the chat? Y'all know I'm not going to get this thing started until I get some engagement. So can y'all please give me some readies? Ready, ready. Ready, That's what, ready, ready. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I appreciate that, y'all. Let's get this thing kicked off. Ready. All right, let's go. So recap really quickly, if you missed it again, week one was on how to get started in real estate and in wholesaling with little to no money. So if you missed that, go to my YouTube or look in the Telegram. I've got the video uploaded and recorded. Week two, we discussed how, okay, so now you know how to get started in real estate. Now we're going to talk about how to talk to sellers, right? So we went in depth on how to talk to sellers, the types of conversations you need to be having with sellers and how you can better build rapport with sellers. Then we moved into week three, which was the theme of deal or no deal slash comping. And that is when we looked at deals to see and, and showed how to get ARV and estimate repairs and see if we really, truly have a deal or not when we're looking at these real estate deals. Right. Then last week, week four was paid in full or how to find buyers. One of my favorite weeks, actually, because this is what gets most people paid. Right. So we went in depth on how to find buyers in virtually in any market locally, the types of um, people that you can mingle with, that you need to network with, as well as the types of strategies that you guys can use to find buyers locally and virtually. So if you missed any of these, they are in the Telegram as well as they are on YouTube. So that was last week's. Now let's get into this week's. So I ended last week's class with broker list, which is it allows for people to post on the MLS without having a real estate license. So we talked about how we can use broker lists to our advantage to list our wholesale deals. But now what I want to talk about briefly is kind of how we can use broker lists as our last resort when the seller does not want to sell at our price or maybe they don't want to. Uh, wholesale it to a wholesaler or whatever it is. So I'm going to talk about how I've used and how we've used broker lists to help us still list deals and still get rapport and get clients. So let's talk about that, right? So pitching broker lists. So what I'll do before, let's get this person in here. All right. So what I'll do when I'm pitching broker lists, guys, is, and this is how this conversation typically goes. If the individual, the seller is at a higher price point than I want them at or than I need them at, and this is when I, this is before I was a licensed realtor in the state of Texas. Now that I'm a licensed realtor, I can just list it under my brokerage, correct? So what I would do is if they have a price that's too high and they're just not at a realistic price point for me to wholesale it at, but maybe the property is clean, maybe it's in good condition, and maybe I have, I have a little bit of faith that if I was to list this thing on the open market, it might sell. So what I'll do is I'll offer a partnership with the seller. So I'll do a JV partnership with the seller of the property and tell them, hey, okay, we might not be able to agree on price, 
because I want it at 200 and you're at 250, but I know that this property is worth $300,000. And if we listed it on the open market, we should be able to get you that $250,000 that you want, no problem. Now, what I'll do is I'll offer a flat rate listing to list it for them. So I say, hey, look, let's go into a partnership together. I'll list this thing on the MLS for you. I'll get a ton of a buyer's eyeballs on this. I'm gonna make sure that every realtor in the surrounding area gets notified that this property is listed. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna blast this out to all of my personal buyers, all my VIP buyers to see if they might be interested in the property. So that is the partnership that I get into with the sellers when I'm pitching broker lists. And this is only when the property is at a too high of a price point. And this is literally, guys, my last resort. I mean, this is my last. I've tried everything. I tried subject to, I've tried owner finance, I've tried wholesaling, I've tried net listing. This is my last resort, right? You guys might be wondering, why is this my last resort? The reason it's my last resort is because the fee on these is a lot smaller. What I'll typically do is only offer one to two percent or a flat rate of three thousand five thousand dollars usually i do three thousand dollars as my flat rate fee for me to list your property on the mls to blast it out to my vip buyers and to make sure that every realtor in the surrounding area is looking at your property and i'll take the calls for you and set up the showings but i don't show it is what i will tell them right so it's a smaller fee so that's why i pitch it last and it can be more work depending on the occupancy status of the property. So that's the con of it, right? This pitching broker list is really best used for properties that are vacant. So the property is vacant, it's on a lockbox. I say it's only worth $150 to give it a shot. I give it a shot all the time, as long as I know that the seller is within a reasonable price point. So if the property's at, let's say they're at 70 to 80% of the ARV, and I know that the market right now is buying maybe at 85, 90% or maybe even 100% and COVID they're buying and the pandemic they're buying at 110, 120% over retail. When opportunities like that are coming around and when I know the market is responding that way, then I'm willing to take that $150 risk. And if you guys are willing to, then I would say do the same. Uh, but it's a little bit more work, like I said, if, if it's occupied. So you want to do this more so with vacant properties because if it's occupied, a lot of the times it's not in show ready um, status and they've got things all over the house. And then you got to kind of get with the seller to see when they have availability to show the property. So you have problems like that that can arise. So that's why I love to only really offer it on vacant properties. But the property is super clean. And like I said, if I just don't want to lose them, ladies and gentlemen, offer pitching broker list for a flat rate. Right. It's an excellent opportunity for you to still get them under contract for you to still make a couple dollars. You're not going to make a killing or it's not going to be a home run, but you still can get some deals, get some transactions and you're getting your name out there. You're getting your company out there and you're you're helping out a seller, which is what we're in this for. Right. We're, we're, we're solution providers. So you're still providing a solution. It just might not be the solution that you want to provide. But at the end of the day, we're still providing a solution and that service to the seller. So. Those are some of the pros. You know, you still get to get the property under contract. You're building trust deal. You're getting referrals because what they'll do is once you list their property and they tell their friend, hey, hey, this guy or this girl listed and sold my property for three thousand dollars. They're going to say, oh, my gosh. Wow. Really? I can't believe they, they did that. The reason is why, because when you list with a realtor, they're going to make you sign a listing agreement. And it's usually for a lengthy period of time, three to six months with us. And when you're pitching it as a broker list, when you're wholesaling it or as a wholesaler, so I say you can tell them, hey. Let's do this for 30 days max. If I can't find you a buyer, let's rip this paper up and let's just keep it moving. Right. Maybe even two weeks, whatever it is, because you're saying, hey, look, I'm just going to get this my best shot. And this is my way of giving it the best shot. So that's another pro that is for the seller is that they don't have to be tied in or locked down as much as well as the percent commission. Usually it's a six percent commission. You know, it's all negotiable, but usually it's six percent. So on a two hundred thousand dollar house. They're coming out, what, $12,000 in realtor commissions. If you can save them nine grand and tell them, hey, I'll still sell your property, Mr. or Mrs. Seller. You just have to show it or you just have to make sure that it stays ready and looks clean. I'll take the photos, I'll list it and all that. But I'll do it for a flat rate of $3,000. you are letting them know, hey, I'm on your team. I'm saving you off the bat $9,000. And that's how 
you guys can pitch brokerless. And that's how I have pitched brokerless for flat rate listings. And like I said, you guys are going into a partnership. That's what I want you to think of this as, as a partnership with the seller. So before I move on, does everybody get that? Yes? Can I get a yes? Can I get a yes? So you charge 3K, but then go back to the broker. Yes, yes, yes. Got it, yes. got it. Yes, Slightly Jesus. following. Yep. Yep. So yes, Jesus. So yeah, I charge them the three thousand and go on brokerless and list it for them because they don't know about brokerless. I'm, I'm providing that solution, right? That's what we're doing. They don't know that you're the real estate expert that has. They don't know that anybody can list on brokerless. So since they don't know that, we go ahead and do it for them, right? So perfect. So that's the way that you guys can pitch brokerless. Now, I would give you guys an example, but you guys here is there. I'll, I'll give you a brief one. Had a guy three hundred thirty thousand dollar house. I wanted it at two fifty. And instead, we ended up listening at 3.30. I took the gamble. It was only $150. I sent somebody out to take photos for $100. So I was all in $250. But this one was occupied. So since this one was occupied, it made it much harder to sell. And it sat on the market for 60 days until it finally did sell. Right. And on this one, we had a flat rate, $3,000. So it works, guys. Trust me. And people are going to go back to realtors. They're going to ask realtors, hey, will you list my house? And they're going to say, yeah, but they're going to see what the fee is and differentiate it from you. And they're going to go, they're going to want to go with you as long as you build rapport and you build trust. All right. So now I want to make sure I got enough time here. I want to get into seller financing. So does any, does, let me get, let me see, let me get a raise of hands. Does any, does everybody in here, who knows what seller financing is? Can y'all raise your hand? There's a little raise hand button that should be at the bottom. Yeah, okay. I'll give y'all like 10 more seconds. Raise your hand if y'all know what seller financing is. Okay, cool, cool. Perfect. All right. What's that? Yes, cool. So we're going to go over seller financing. This is, we're going to go over what it is, why should you use it, and how would you use it. That's what we're going to go over really quickly here, right? So seller financing slash owner financing slash land contract, these are all ways that you guys can get into deals and that you guys can negotiate deals with sellers and get into them with little to no skin in the game. And what I mean by that is you guys can get into a $100,000 property, $200,000 property with little to no money down, maybe $2,500, $1,000. It's using these seller financing tactics. So definition of seller financing, it is a real estate agreement in which the seller handles the mortgage process instead of a financial institution. And the buyer, i.e. you or your end buyer, signs a mortgage with the seller. So sometimes they call it as a seller carry back or because the seller is going to act as the bank for you guys. So what that would mean or look like, for example, is if you guys own, if the seller owns a house and they don't, maybe, maybe you guys aren't agreeing on price, you can tell them, hey, I know we're not agreeing on price, but I'm willing to pay that full offer, a price that you want for the $100,000, but let's drag it out over a longer term. Instead of me giving you $100,000 today, let me give you the $100,000 where I give you $5,000 today, and then I'll pay you $500 a month for three years, five years, whatever it is. These are all negotiable terms. So that's the beauty of seller financing is all can be negotiated. So that's why you guys want to use these tactics to your advantage, right? A benefit of this, what you guys can pitch to your sellers is one of the benefits are the tax benefits. So I preached this to a gentleman in California. He was trying to sell his property and he said, I just don't want to get hit with the tax. He wanted, he wanted $900,000 for the property. And I said, okay, we give you the $900,000 cash. That's fine and wholesale it. But he said, no, I don't want to do that. I'd rather do the land contract so I don't get hit with the capital gains tax on the sale for one. And then for two, so that I have passive income coming in because I'm old. I'm looking to retire. I don't want to get this big lump sum of money, and then I don't know where my next month of money is coming from. So the benefit to this gentleman was he gets the tax break of not having to get the capital gains tax right away because he's doing a seller finance on it. And then the second thing is he gets monthly payments, right? Monthly payments. This is a beautiful way for you, for somebody to get to be a landlord but not have to have any obligations to the property. When you do these seller finance or these land contracts, you're not responsible for property taxes. You're not responsible for the insurance. You're not responsible for any maintenance, 
None of that. All that goes out the window because you as the buyer or your end buyer is the one that's purchasing the property. So they're responsible for all of that. Just like when you guys go and get a mortgage on a house, the bank doesn't say when the water heater goes out, the bank doesn't come in and fix it. The bank doesn't pay your property taxes. The bank doesn't pay your insurance. You do all these things. So the seller is just acting like the bank for you guys. So that's another benefit to the sellers is maybe they're tired of being a landlord, but they like the monthly cash flow they get. So you can tell them, hey, I'll buy that portfolio or I'll buy that tenant occupied home. And you can still receive that monthly income for a certain set amount of time. But you have no obligations to be a landlord anymore. You have no obligations to have to deal with tenants or any of their rights. So that's another beautiful thing when you're pitching it to tired landlords is that. And you can, and, and I want to emphasize, guys, you can get into a deal with little to no money down, right? For example, we had a deal out here in uh, Michigan, in Detroit, Michigan. I'll use this one, for example. What was the address? I believe 8151 Mansfield, I believe was the address. Let's go to that one. So with this property, my brother, 9151, my brother was actually able to get into this property with, I believe, ten five to $10,000 down, right? It's so a $50,000 property. It was already tenant occupied. Both sides were rented out for about $550 to $600 a month. It was bringing in $1,100 a month already. So he wanted a rental property, but he didn't want to come out what the guy was asking. The seller was asking for a full $50,000 cash. My brother said, well, how can we get creative and how can we get this deal? So what we ended up coming up with and formulating was a seller finance deal where the seller would take a lump sum up front, $5,000, and my brother would pay him monthly until the agreed upon payment was done. And he didn't even have to pay out of his own pocket because it was already occupied by the tenants. So that $1,100 a month was just going straight to the seller for 24 months or for, for 18 months, whatever it was. So he just had to put up that initial capital and then he had a rental property. And after it was paid off, after the seller was paid off, now he's got a property that he was able to get into with little to no skin in the game, right? With only $5,000. So that's why I'm gonna tell you guys the power of being able to buy rental properties. You can either put them in, put them under section eight or wholesale them. Cause when you do these seller financing, you can still wholesale these deals. So how that would look is, when he got this for $5,000, he would just turn around and market the down payment as his assignment fee. So he would tell him the terms. When you market it, you say, hey, the terms are $1,100 a month for 18 months. And instead of us saying that the down payment is $5,000, you would say hey, the down payment is $10,000. So that's how you can assign a seller finance deal. So I know a lot of people are wondering, how can you assign or how can you wholesale a seller financing deal? That is exactly how you just put your fee on top of the down payment. And this can this all can be done with a title company. This all they can draft up your docs for you. You can do it outside of a title company if you like, but we suggest doing it with a title company. And you guys can still collect your fee. And you can even, if you want, build in that you get some of the monthly payment. It's it's creative financing, ladies and gentlemen. You can get as creative as you want on these deals. If you don't want to take any money up front, but you want a hundred dollars a month for 60 months or whatever it is, for the entirety of the deal, you can set those terms and those guidelines. It just has to make sense for where your end buyer is gonna be, right? So before I move forward to another example, are y'all getting that? Does that make sense? I think we got a hand here. What's, what's going on? Uh, we got a hand, Mr. Mr. Willis, D? No, maybe that was from before. Okay. All right. Makes sense. Everybody makes sense. That makes sense. Makes sense. Cool. Cool. All right. Perfect. So I'm going to give y'all another example. And this example was one I'm going to share successes as well as failures with y'all. Right. So let's go ahead and go to one that didn't work out all the way for us, but was a perfect, exa perfect example of how you can use seller financing to you guys' advantage. And Devon, I'm sure is familiar with this deal as well. Right. This deal was a deal that we got through our channel of cold call marketing. It was a deal where they wanted five, they wanted four hundred and eighty thousand dollars or so. It was listed. Let's see what it was listed for. Let's get the exact number. Four ninety. 
So he wanted four hundred and ninety thousand dollars cash for a eight unit property that was not occupied. Right. So we ran the numbers. We went and saw the property and we said, man, this thing just doesn't work at the full cash out value that it's at. So once we built enough rapport with the seller, once we built enough trust and once we we met him in person. What we did was we went to him and said, hey, look, this is what we're trying to do. This is our exit strategy for the property. We would love to purchase it, take it down. But what we want to do is if you're open and willing, because we knew what his pain point was, his pain point was, which is why you guys want to build rapport with the seller and get the reason for selling always. He didn't want the mortgage any longer. He couldn't afford the mortgage and the occupancy rate was low on the property. So he just couldn't take shelling out that three thousand dollars a month every month for the property so he just his pain was that mortgage so what we said was we can put down a down payment on this it won't be the full 490 that you want right now you know mr seller but we can give you 10 percent down or five percent down i believe it was five percent down twenty thousand dollars so we went from five hundred thousand dollars 490 to twenty thousand dollars down and he will carry the rest of the note we would just pay his mortgage every month for two years until we refinance him out of that loan right so that's another example like i said i want to tell you guys about just how you can use this creative finance and once you build rapport once you know their reason for selling to be able to get into a deal at a steal of a number and if you aren't taking it down you can still wholesale and assign these deals and these are still ways and methods that you guys can talk to your sellers and let them know that this is an opportunity. This is a, a strategy that I can use that you can't use with a typical person. That's the benefit of working with me, Mr. and Mrs. Sellers, that I have the ability to do these creative financing things, unlike others, right? So before I move on, I hope that every, that made sense to everybody, right? That's good, everybody's good. Can I get a good? Good, 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 good. Good, good, good. All right, cool. We good. We good. All right. So let's move on to the next one in really quickly, which is novation. Like I said, I'm going to breeze through this because this has just come up a lot lately because of the gurus have been trying to make this thing sound like something that's really not. Um, novation is just strictly replacing one contract, guys, uh, and substituting another party for it. So when you're assigning or wholesaling or a, a property, you do an assignment, you're still liable for all of the things in that contract. When you're doing a novation, you're releasing yourself from that contract that you originally had. So that's what a novation is. A lot of people do these on like a, a typical novation agreement that people don't even really know about. It's like a sublease on an apartment, right? Or when you're you got an apartment, you're leasing it out, and then you say, Hey, I want to move, I don't want this thing any longer. And then what you do is you just talk to the, the leasing office and say, Hey, can this person take over the contract that I have? This next six months that's left on this, can they take it over? So that's like a typical everyday novation agreement that people will see and people use. But like I said, I don't want to really harp on this. If you guys have any extra questions y'all want to get into with this on how you can use this for repairs on properties and things like that with open door and offer pad and how you can use novation, we can get into that offline. I don't want to spend too much time on that, y'all. So that's novation. What I want to do is I want to jump into subject two, which I want to spend a good amount of time on. All right. So subject two, we're going to talk about what it is, why, and how. All right. So who in here knows what subject two is? Can I get a raise of hands on this one? All right. Who knows what subject two is? Subject two is. Who knows what subject two is? Cool. I love it. All right. That's good. Let's get this thing rolling in. So subject two, let's go by the definition, right? Sub two or subject two means a buyer is essentially taking over the seller's remaining mortgage balance without making it official to the lender. Now, there are two ways you can do a subject two. There's a subject two where you can let the lender know and they have to get approval. And then there's a subject two where you don't do, where you don't get approval from the lender and you just take over the loan. All right. So what, why would that even be a thing? Right. And why, and why would you use that? So why you would use it is because let's just say during the pandemic, when individuals got those super low interest rates, right? Interest rates were at two, three percent. 4% interest rate, right, interest rate right now is 7%. Maybe they're foreclosing on their property. They're getting foreclosed on on their property. What you can do is, is you can come in as an expert, as a solution provider and let them know, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I understand that you're behind. 
what I can do and I can do what I can do is I can come in, catch you up on your on your payments. So if you're behind two, three months, I'm going to catch you up on your payments. So you'd be up to date on your mortgage payments, as well as I'm going to take over the rest of your mortgage payments until I either refinance you out or until it's, it's until the maturity date. Right. So right now, interest rates are high. So I, we are going to love to go in and take people's interest rates over that got those super low interest rates during the pandemic. So what this this comes popular in is on foreclosure. So whenever you see a foreclosure, y'all, I want y'all to think of subject two. Whenever you see a foreclosure, whenever you have a foreclosure seller, if you can think of subject two first, because they're behind on the, you already know what their pain point is. It's the mortgage. So the subject two allows for you to provide a solution for the sellers. And that solution is you taking over their mortgage, you paying their mortgage monthly and making and then the benefit to them is their credit is going to help their credit out. So if you're paying their mortgage every month, it's still showing on their credit report that they are paying. They're paying. It's going to show on time. So it's going to help their credit, boost their credit. And then when you cash or refinance them out or the maturity days up and that loan is paid off, their debt to income ratio decreases and they look phenomenal on paper. So you just help them out. So that's another benefit that you guys can tell the sellers. Right. And then the benefit to you guys and to your buyers is you can get into the property just like with seller financing with little to no money down. I mean, you can get into these properties. We got into a property for five hundred dollars on a subject two. We got into a property with five thousand dollars down on a subject two. So you can be as creative as possible when it comes to the amount up front to be able to get that seller out of the house. And what what that looks like is I just straight up ask them, "Hey, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, let's forget about the mortgage. Let's forget about how much you're behind. What will it take for you to get to that next chapter in your life?" What will it take for you to get to your next property, that next apartment, move in with your daughter? What does that look like? And they'll tell you, you know, what are, do you need moving? Do you need help with moving? Do you need moving costs? And that's what you guys help them with. And that's how you pitch this subject too. You let them know I'm here to help. Not only am I going to take over this mortgage because that's a headache to you. And I know it's been a headache. It's been a, it's been it has been a burden on your shoulders, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, this, this dang on this dang on a uh, mortgage. I, let's forget about that. I'm going to take care of that. Now what I want us to focus on is you. How do we take care of you now? And how do we get you to that next point in life? And that's how you pitch it to them. And they're going to say, I just need a couple hundred dollars. I need a few thousand dollars. I might need ten, fifteen thousand dollars. They're going to tell you out of their mouth what they need to get to that next point in life. And now you know the number that they need and you can negotiate from there and then you play the game of negotiation but i love subject two because we have been able to pitch it so well on foreclosures and i mean so well and this typically is best in situations where maybe they have a lower income they might have just lost their job uh you know situation where they're in distress you're stacking distress on top of each other so not only are they behind on their mortgage but they just lost their job Maybe they had a low paying job or maybe their husband just died and the husband was paying the mortgage. Things like that that you can stack distress on top of each other. You want to go to the subject to y'all think subject to. Right. And what you want to do is you want to make sure you find an investor friendly title company so they can do they can draw up these docs for you and they'll do everything for you guys can still go to the closing table and have everything done professionally. They'll still run title work. They'll still, all, still do all that jazz. And how you sell this is the same way, guys, on a wholesale or assignment as you would sell a seller financing. What you're going to do is once they tell you that number, that bottom line, y'all negotiated what they need to walk away with, you're going to get all the information on their mortgage. So you're going to get the payoff amount, how much they're behind if they're behind, the maturity date, and then if they have any insurance on it already, what the insurance is. But they typically don't have insurance on it because they've been behind on their mortgage. So you're going to have to figure out what that will look like, right? So then you package all of that up and you present it to an investor and you tell the investor, hey, this is, they, they want it 5,000, let's say. You pitch it to the investor and say they want it 10,000. They want 15,000, whatever it is. You tell them that number, that down payment amount that the seller's looking to walk away with, you add your cushion on there, you add your fee on there, and that's how you get paid on the subject too as, an, as a wholesaler. So it's the exact same as, as seller financing. 
It's just a subject to with the mortgage on it, right? So they call it sometimes even wraps is what they might even call it. All right, so before I move on and show an example, can I get a got that? Y'all got it? Y'all got it? Is y'all Are y'all good on that? Or do I need to slow down? You know, I got excited. I got a little excited. Got it? Oh. And like I said, on all of these, y'all, I could go in. These all could be their own hour, hour and a half classes. So that's why I don't want to sit on one for too long. And I want to make sure that if y'all do have any questions, y'all put them in the chat. And if y'all have any more in-depth questions that we are able to get to them, get on my calendar, y'all. And I will go over in depth how these looks, how these look. So I'm going to go over is our Waco deal, right? This is a beautiful one that we had. We JV this. So just so y'all can go back to previous classes, we JV this with another wholesaling company. So once we got the deal under contract, we went with another wholesaler. We called them and said, hey, do you have buyers in Waco, Texas? Because we don't. And they said, yes, let's blast this thing out. So situation. Seller was in distress. She was living in this property for 20 years. She was behind on the, on the mortgage payment. It was an owner finance. So look, it was an owner finance. She owner financed the property from someone and was behind on the owner finance note. She was behind six months. So once I got all that information, how much she's behind, I got how much the, mo the mortgage monthly payment is, and I found her pain, her real, so she said she just lost her job. She just lost her husband. Her, she, she's just in a distressed situation. So I went down to the property. I met her in person. And what I did was I brought some food to the property. I said, hey, you're moving out right now. I see you're like moving things around between to your daughter. Let me, so I brought a Little Caesars hot and ready, $5. Didn't cost me anything. And I said, hey, here's this, you know, think about what it is you want to walk away with. We still hadn't negotiated that. I said, and I'll be back. You know, I'm going to go get some boxes from Home Depot and I'll be back. So what I did was I went to Home Depot and I came back, I said, hey, hey, Maria, I just want to know, you know, you, you thought about it now. What does it look like for you to be able to just move on from this property? And she just broke down. So, you know, this property, I've been in it for so long, but I'm just ready to move on. Every time I look at it now, it just reminds me of negative things. And she ended up saying, give me $750 today. And this property is yours. So for $750, we were able to get into this property that was worth $230,000. And she was only behind. $2,400 in her mortgage. Her mortgage was only like $400 a month. She had got the property that was worth $60,000, $70,000. So her, she was only paying $400 a month. She was behind six months. We had to catch it up $2,400. And then we paid her $750 for her to just walk away from the property. Little to no skin in the game, y'all. And then what we did was we called the, the wholesaling company. We Googled wholesaling companies near us. We found one. We pitched them the deal. They said, we can find a buyer for that. We ended up selling the deal for $17,500. So we ended up netting like $14,000. We split it down the middle on that one because that was our first ever JV deal. We didn't really know the game I taught y'all last week on how you need to pitch your price and stick to your price. So we split seventeen five dollars down the middle, which ended up being $14,000. So we walked away with $7,000 each for 60 days worth of work. Right. So that is an example and how a subject to deal looked for us. And we've done multiple of these. And I love these because it just blows my mind that some people have gotten so tired and so frustrated and so fed up with a property that they're willing to walk away from that thing. For pennies. All right. So before I move on, does everybody get that? Everybody good on that? Can I get a good really quickly? And then we're almost done here, y'all. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. Isn't that crazy? Good. Come on, let me get some more action, man. Y'all, y'all good? Y'all good? Y'all good? We good, good, man. Good. That's awesome. Yeah, y'all gonna make me hang the hang the phone call up if y'all don't give me some activity up in here, y'all. <laughs> no, 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 we're awake. We're awake. Uh, we're on the good. Good. All right, all right. Good. Good. That's good. awesome. Bring it good. on. Good, good, good. Okay, cool. And like I said, y'all, we can go over these a lot more in depth. I just want to just briefly talk on, talk on these. And if y'all have any questions on these, get on my calendar. That is y'all homework this week. Get on my calendar, y'all, so we can go over these. I'll show y'all more examples of how I've done every one of these. All right. So now this is, if I'm not mistaken, this should be the last one, correct? Yeah. Short sale. So we're going to talk about what a short sale is. This is going to be used in situations when they are reaching foreclosure as well. Um, I've only done one of these. 
so far in my career, but it took forever, but it was a steal. I mean, it took forever. It took six months for us to get the deal done, six to seven months, but it, we got it for a steal, right? So we're going to talk about what it is, excuse me, why use it and how it looks. So what a short sale is in real estate is an offer on a property that is less than the mortgage amount owed. So what that is, is say somebody owes $100,000 on their property, but the property maybe only is worth $60,000. They might be underwater. You might have heard that a lot when the 08 crisis happened. A lot of people bought prices at the peak, it crashed, and they were underwater. So that's when a short sale will come in, where you as the buyer, you negotiate with the seller. Everybody has to be in, uh, in union. Everybody has to be on the same page. The lender, the seller, as well as the buyer all have to be able to work together in unison. So you pitch to the seller, hey, I'll buy this house, but I can't buy it at the $100,000 mortgage. Let's go to the lender and see if we can negotiate a short sale and buy this thing for X amount of dollars. So it's used for financially distressed homeowners who want to sell before being foreclosed on. So it's a benefit because they won't be foreclosed on, but it does still show negatively on their credit report, but it's not as negative as a foreclosure. Right? So see what we got all right so that is the distressed person and it's gonna be like i said mostly for it's gonna be for most people that are trying to avoid foreclosure or for individuals that are underwater so let's who knows they say we're supposed to be going into a recession who knows maybe a lot of those people that bought properties 50 100 000, 60 dollars over the asking price they who knows they might be in that situation in the next year or two who knows if so keep this short selling your back pocket as one of the tools that you guys can use and you guys can pitch to sellers as an exit strategy. So it has to be approved by the lender. That's the only way that you can do a short sale. It has to be approved by the lender, right? And as I stated, guys, it's a lengthy process. But why would you use it? Because you can get a property for a steal if it goes your way, right? It's, and you're going to need somebody on your team to work this through. I've got a person that was a short sale consultant that we hired for anything that's sh short sale related, we just send them the deal. Right? But it has to be approved by the lender and it's a lengthy process. That's what I want y'all to remember. So I'm gonna give y'all an example of this Greenville deal and then we'll be pretty much done here, All right? So we had a deal out here in Greenville on 6708 Flamingo, right? So the lady had a property she inherited from her mother and it was behind on payments as well as it was underwater the mortgage on it was for 128,000. the property at the time was only worth 90 grand and it's as is condition so what we did was we told her hey we did everything possible we tried to pitch we, we pitched everything seller financing we pitched subject to but the subject to just didn't make sense because it was we were underwater so what we finally ended up landing on was the short sale and i found a short sale consultant that mastered working with Mr. Cooper, who's a, who they say is a tough lender to deal with. So we pitched to them, hey, we'll buy this house for $60,000, as well as we'll make sure we give you, when you walk away from this property as a seller, a few dollars as well for, work, for working with us, for being in unison, and for walking away, you know, for being a good team player. So we, I think we offered $1,000 to be able to walk away, as well as we were offering the bank $60,000 on this property that was worth in as is condition 90,000. And like I said, it took us six months, a lot of back and forth with the lender. We had to postpone two foreclosures, but we finally were able to get the deal done. And we were able to get it, we were able to get the property for $68,000 for Mr. Cooper. And we wholesaled this thing for 95,000. So we made almost 30 grand. It took us six months, but this is a deal that went from dead to closed it went from dead to, I'm sorry, it went from dead to warm, dead to warm three or four times because of how many times we tried to pitch different criteria and different exit strategies to the seller until it finally went from dead to close when we finally were able to get this short sale done, right? So that's the short sale for y'all. It's going to be used when somebody is underwater on their mortgage or on, on their property value is worth less than what their mortgage is. And more than likely, they're going to be in a foreclosure state as well. Right, so those are that is the characteristics. Those are the characteristics of what this seller would look like when you guys are speaking to them. Okay, so does that make sense? Can I get a yes or no on that? Does that make sense? Say truth. No, that's right. Yes. Cool. Cool. Giving out game. 
Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So that is short sales, y'all. And like I said, these may become back. They were very popular from 08 to like 010. I'm sorry, 2010. And they may become very, very popular again for those people that has paid $50,000, $60,000 over asking price. So now what I want to do is I want to open up the floor to any questions that y'all might have. And like I said, I know I breezed through a lot of this fast, but that's because what I want y'all to do in y'all homework is to get on my calendar because I know that I went through this fast and I did that for a reason. So that y'all have to get on my calendar so y'all can go more in depth. Hey, what was subject two again? Hey, what was seller financing again? How can I buy a rental property? If I'm looking for a rental property with only $2,500 down, get on my calendar, y'all. That is why I was breezing through this so fast. So I want to open up the floor. I said the questions. Y'all got any questions at all for me? Please shoot. I know y'all not gonna have no questions for me today. Jeez, I was that bad. <clears throat> Must have been, huh? Great question. Subject tools, I mean, it depends on the list you pull. And it depends. the question is, are subject tools common or are they rare to find is the question. So it depends on, you know, what you're looking for. If you're looking for a yellow car, when you go out, you're gonna see a ton of yellow cars, right? So if you're looking for subject to deals and that's what you're looking for and what you're aiming for, you'll be able to find them. But it also depends on the list you're pulling, the types of sellers you're reaching out to, et cetera. So it just all depends, but they're not rare to find. If you're looking for them, you'll find them. That's a great question. Great, great question. Any other questions, y'all? Come on, I need at least one or two more, y'all. Don't leave me hanging like this. Hey, uh, how long you gonna be in Detroit? <laughs> <laughs> so we both met up today. You... Uh, I'll be in Detroit until uh, Saturday morning at five a.m. I know I've been busy. Uh, if y'all, a lot of y'all know, I just got in uh, gauge, so been doing a lot of the whole family thing and meeting up with family and dropping off gifts and all that jazz. So been a little busy. So my apologies. Can you come down to the uh, to the uh, the unit tomorrow? I may be able to. We'll discuss offline. All right. All right. Yep. Any other questions, y'all? Come on. I at least need one more. Y'all know this is going on YouTube, so I need to ask some really good questions, y'all. And I know I was breeze, blazing through stuff. Y'all want me to ask my own? I ask a question and answer it. No? Nothing more? Okay. Well, if nothing more, that's fine. Was this helpful? Can I get a helpful if so? If not, definitely helpful. Thank you. Helpful. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Very, if this wasn't very, helpful, very helpful, please, y'all, get offline. Tell me how I could have done better. Tell me, hey, I wish you to talk more about this. Or I wish you to talk more about this. Please, y'all, let me know. Because, like I said, I went through this fast. So I'm glad this is helpful to some. It wasn't helpful to all. Please get offline and message me and tell me how it could have been better. I take constructive criticism, y'all. Please. Most definitely helpful. Great, great, great. Okay, I appreciate that, y'all. I mean, if y'all don't have any more questions for me, then what I'll do is I'll let y'all go a little early. Helpful just have that process. It all go through notes. Helpful to just to have the process. It all go through notes and stuff. Very helpful. Apologies in the middle of something. <laughs> it's all good. All right, cool, y'all. Well. If this was good, this is good information. I'm glad. Thank you for your time. Again, homework, get on my calendar. I want each and every one of y'all to be able to get on my calendar and ask me something regarding one of those exit strategies, whether it's broker list, subject to seller financing, novations, or short sales. Get on my calendar, please. All right, y'all. But well, again, thank you for your time. My name is Dylan Wade. I was y'all host for today for Get Rich or Die Train. I'll see y'all next week, same time. Peace. God bless. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you.